In this video, we're going to take a look at Elicard's StreamEye Stream Analyzer software. In the past, we've used AVNaptic for stream analysis, but it simply doesn't support H.265. So uh, we've started to use this. It does have some additional features as well. Um, so on the left, we have a stream report. This is just going to show us uh, stream information like quantization, which we have here under QP. will show us average, minimum, and max. Note that this is running a bit higher than a lot of streams simply because uh, this this is with SmartStream on in the Vivitech camera. It's dynamically adjusting quantization higher uh, since there's nothing moving in the stream. Uh, we can see resolution, frame rate, that sort of thing as well here, as well as the clip duration. Up top, we get a bar chart showing us the actual frames uh, in our stream. So the tall red ones here are our iframes. And if we hover over them, we can actually see information for each frame. So we can see uh, the time in the stream, what number it is in the stream, the actual size and bits, as well as the quantization. So we can frame by frame see what's happening in quantization. Um, this is a P frame right next to it. It's very short because it's very small, uh, difficult to see. So uh, in addition to that, the one thing we did not get in Avianaptic was this actual display of what's happening in the stream, what's being sent as far as full frames versus P frames. And right now we're looking at the iframe. We can see everything is highlighted in red here in the image uh, in our scene. If we switch to P frame, let's go to the second frame. Uh, we can see that the changes that are sent uh, in the second frame, which is P frame, are just highlighted in blue. So we can actually see what's being changed and what it's seeing, what the camera is seeing as a change. So we're able to analyze streams a bit better. We can see, for example, that repetitive patterns um, are causing some changes up here on the slats across these TV stands. We still get some in the carpet uh, as we've seen in the past. The other thing this lets us do is compare to H.264. So uh, if we switch to the H.264 stream, let's go to the same frame. Uh, these were recorded at the same time. Uh, we can see that the macro block size is much smaller. So if take a look at H.264 here. If we take a look at H.265, we can see much, much larger macro blocks. This results in better compression. We're not using so many bits to say, send uh, the same information. So let's just switch back to that again. Same area, same stream, same time in the stream, uh, much uh, much larger blocks in 265. We'll also see that because of this and because of increases in efficiency in the codec, it's not sending as many changes. So uh, we can see that we have changes sent around our chart, on the chart, a little bit in the carpet and across these TV stands. But if we take a look at H.264, which is less efficient, we're going to see that we get massive amounts of changes on repetitive patterns. So the TV stands again on the chart, and definitely across this carpet. So this is uh, the repetitive pattern that the camera is seeing as a change. It's seeing uh, some noise. So it just increases bit rate, increases bandwidth, and H.265 simply handles that better. So uh, that's a rough overview of Elicard and how we've used it for H.265 analysis uh, and some of the differences with H.264. 